The Tuileries Gardens were this year's meeting point for the 225 competitors in the 18th Optic 2000 Auto Tour. Day one was about technical administrative checkings, as well as putting the stickers on and the last preparations for the 1,550 miles to Deauville by way of Bourgogne, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Northern France. We've been presenting themes for the last few years. This year's is the celebration of the first appearance of Ford's GT40. We have four beautiful cars, and we celebrate the first Jaguar Mark I and two victories 50 years ago. We have a dozen cars and a great platform. This one won in 63. Mr. Constan was at the wheel and Mr. Reynal was his co-pilot. It's one of the five Jaguar victories in 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. The technical checkings are today's high point. The cars must be set according to the regulations. The marshals don't have a moment for themselves as they must check a huge quantity of details. This is competition, right? They're all responsible for the tires, the harnesses, the helmets, the fire extinguishers, and all security devices to be according to the regulations. You're being timed here only once. Competitors are put into action right away. The organization is thorough and leaves no place for luck. Flash your stoplights and your taillights. So, how many each? Mm, between 50 and 55 cars? The competitors, pilots and co-pilots, number 450. They come from 30 countries to participate in one of the greatest sport events in the world. We have two cars from Lebanon with two Lebanese crews. These cars are 1750 AGT AM Alphas and were modified and prepared for competition. We have a few of them here. You have to yeah. participate at, at the big events, so as uh, yes. Tour Le Tour, uh, uh, Paul, uh, Tour Britannia, as you told us, uh, Le Mans Classic, uh, Mont Ventoux. Mm -hmm. That are the races you have to go to. They asked me to come. Sorry? They asked me to come. I was here last year, and they asked me to come back this year. <laughs> and it's better than going to work. And uh, where do you come from? Scotland. Scotland. 2008 winner Ludovic Caron came back with his Cobra. Seen here battling with Sean Lynn at the Castellet. So you're putting your title back at stake this year, right? Yes, I am. But the most important thing here is to compete in the Auto Tour for the 10th time. The title is just secondary. Is it a difficult race? Yes, it is, because we race for five days and not in the same place. It's difficult also because there are special rally stages and racetracks. You have to avoid penalties and technical problems. Winning this tour is about combining all of this and not just about being fast. This year's star is 79-year-old Henri Grodet, back from Arizona. We started with cars that were not very fast, like Anglias. Then we moved up to Zodiacs, Falcons, Galaxies, and so on. After that, I went to GM to drive Opals and finally Corvettes. Among the onlookers is found singer Philippe Laville. 
I've been rebuilding this one a little bit at a time for the last eight years. Not the 2000, but the 1600. I hope the car will be ready later this year. It's a convertible I bought in the 80s, and hopefully it'll be back on the road this year. It's extremely rare, one of the first Ferraris. It might sound a little show-off, but it's very well spent money to preserve the memory of this car. When I see the financial incentives offered to condemn old cars to the junkyard, it upsets me. <laughs> As I said before, the tour goes this year to northern France, a region where it has already passed and that is not to everyone's dislike. If we're lucky, it'll rain on the Côte d'Azur and the sun will shine upon the palm trees in Luxembourg. You know it's a tax haven, so there must be palm trees, right? Anyway, the event is big enough to attract a crowd of onlookers and passionate people all day long. The Prime Minister himself will be there in order to take a peek at one of the greatest car collections ever. Next morning, drivers get off to a very early start in order to avoid traffic jams in Paris to Mollery and the first stage, a 1.8 kilometer warm up on the school track. Some, the warm-up didn't go as planned as for Dominique Rosello and Jean-Pierre Poisson's Mini. Something apparently broke near the shock absorbers and the car flipped. Two categories are competing. Regularity with two platforms. It is about 100 crews and three competition platforms with 115 cars. In competition class, the most important thing is speed, but for the regularity platform, it's an average chosen by the drivers. At the starting point of the second stage, scores are set. The Milos, a French man and his son, are on the line for a final victory this year, as they were last year's runners-up. In second place is found Britain's Sean Lynn in a GT40. He raced an AC Cobra last year and switched to an even more powerful car. Finally, Ludovic Caron put his title back at stake when he won last year's tour at a last moment due to a mechanical problem in the last stage. For the last stage of the first day on the track of Dijon, a few outsiders emerge, such as the GT40 of Pierre Alain and Philippe France, or Michael Vanti and Jean-Pierre Van der Rover's Lotus 11. The drivers will end the day of warming up in the city of Beaune, with a dinner served near the historic medieval hospital. At the beginning of day two, we hit the road in a pure auto tour atmosphere. The last minute preparations, the meetings, and many other pleasures contribute to the conviviality of the race. 
we meet the first driver to start the race, Gérard Larousse, who switched from a Ferrari to a beautiful Mercedes. This second day goes by on the track of Chenevière. This very technical ring is the site of this edition's first battle. Whether for the competition or the regularity platforms, all hell has broken loose. At the end of day one, the competition platform leader is Britain's Sean Lynn. In the G category, Jean Guitard's 906 Porsche leads the way as well as the Le Courts Porsche in the G category, but only six seconds ahead of Alain Serpagy's Alpine. As for the reliability platform, the leader is the Linwood's 2.7i 911 RS Porsche. We also witnessed the first maneuvers and the spectacular steering the drivers are capable of. Right from day one, we have noticed an impressive amount of female competitors. Is the Optic 2000 Tour going equal on gender representation? The feminization of the platform sets an atmosphere sexier than ever, to everyone's delight. Women count 45 competitors, or 8% of the crews. Some male chauvinists did the math and came up with the fact that five of them actually drive, two only in competition platform. Far from all these calculations, let us just enjoy their presence in a historically male sport, even if this issue doesn't seem to bother them much. I don't know if there are very many female crews, do you? The answer is two. The Françoise Maul Poncini and Dominique May Mogel is one of them. My husband is on the competition platform and I didn't want to do it with him anymore. After 10 years as a co-pilot, I thought it would be fun to be on the other side. Both women signed up for the regulatory platform driving a 1958 Mark I Jaguar. They tested us a little yesterday. They told us, we're going to spice things up a little. Let's see if the chicks can handle it. But some got caught anyway, so... It's scandalous with such a car. Just pass. He's putting pressure on me. I'm not going to pull over and just politely let him go by. Just pass, you idiot. I can't believe this. They have the cars and they make the noise, but that's all they can do. I'm not pulling over. That's what he wants me to do. We're going to go back to the car and hope she starts. We talk with her. That's the thing with old cars. They don't always work when you want them to. What about the levels? You are the husband, aren't you? Yes, I am, and the team manager, technical advisor. When they race alone, what kind of advice do you give them? Do they come to you, or do you want to be left alone? Oh, they handle it very well, actually. They don't need advice anymore, and they even are ahead of us in the rankings. 
It's quite stressful in the morning. Will she start? It's all right today. I just let her warm up and there we go. We won't be able to do a full recognition of the course. Usually, we arrive around 9.30. And right now, we have to go on soon. Damn, two kilometers. Just tell me how we are. You're four seconds late. At least they bring something new to this type of tour. Smiling and a different approach to a race, more against themselves than against others. It's also a satisfaction for the organization to notice that the event suits everyone, male or female. Car racing has a reputation of being kind of a man's world. So why are there more and more women involved? The auto tour has two regulations, the competition and the regularity, which is somewhat scary for both male and female competitors. Some men are not quite comfortable and race in the regularity platform for a couple of years and then they sign up for the competition. Others choose to come as a couple, just like in everyday life. The man is at the wheel and the woman handles the navigation. An example of this is Didier Sirg and Céline Maff, who compete in a 69 Corvette. This is a first for Céline, even if she didn't really have a choice. He didn't have a co-pilot, so he dragged me into it. It's very intense. I thought that we could relax, but you really have no time. She got it all about the directions and made no mistakes during the entire day. I'm glad to do this with her. I was afraid that she couldn't handle it, but she got right into it. After lunch at the Saline Royale d'Arc et Senon, the first road stage starts in Val de Cusance. Val de Cusance, it seems that the marshals are waiting for an important guest, Henri Gredère. Henri Gredère, whose name is known to every car racing fan in the 70s, came to give his son Pierre a taste of the race. As a GM pilot, he brought the first Chevrolet Corvettes to European track. This guy raced in Le Mans with a Corvette. He raced Commodores. He raced Mustangs. Lately, you have tested the Corvette for Sport Auto, right? You've come back from the USA with your Stetson. This guy is as legendary as Jean Ragnotti. Mustache. Mustache. A great pilot when I was a kid. He's a young man, a great champion. He's a legendary pilot from the end of the 60s and the 70s. What a career he had, right? When I turned professional, it was in his team. The number one track for me was the Nürburgring. Why is that? Because it's called the Nürburgring, 27 kilometers with 170 turns. That's what the Nürburgring was all about. Two days ago, there was this kid at lunch with a picture of an Opel on his shirt. His name was Kenny. 
He was nine and he asked my father to sign his shirt. It was great because it is usually older people that come to him. The fact that a kid knows that is just great. In the big right curve in Stavlo, there are a lot of billboards and an R8 Gordini just went right on through. Do you know who was driving? <laughs> no. Jean Todt? <laughs> a word on the regulatory platform. Robert and Anne Linwood lead the way in their 1973 RS Carrera that is terrific on the side roads of Bourgogne. Rouston and Halox 356 is four seconds behind, just as Christian Fleury and Stéphane Bonneron's 275 GTB Ferrari. The tour stops off in Mulhouse for the night. Dinner was served in the remarkable National Automotive Museum. For many of the pilots, it is a discovery and an occasion to dive into a century of automotive history. All the cars that marked history are here. Bugattis, pre-war cars, torpedoes, Hispano Suiza, so many incredible names, brands and models. It's an extraordinary place. The collection brings back memories to everyone, sometimes as old as their passion. From the age of five, I can remember cleaning the wheels of my father's automobile in the garage in Jamaica, Jamaica, where we were raised. And um, it's because of my father, our father, sorry, that we are here. He um, has done the tour tour for 10 years, 10, 12, 12 years. years. 12 years, yeah. He loves it, loves it, loves France, loves everything about it. And two years ago, he invited us to, do, to come with and gave us a car, lent us a car. <laughs> and um, now we do it together as a family, which is amazing. You know, my father lives in Asia. And um, so we meet here halfway and do the tour and meet with friends from Stad and Hong Kong and all over. And the people are amazing. Everybody, the organization, the Navets, everybody, the food. Um, the venues like this. Venues like this. Yeah. I mean, I would never come here if it wasn't for the tour, right? Right. So the, um, to the automobile, it looks like. It's. I'm. I'm very. I love vintage. Anything vintage. Vintage clothes. Vintage automobiles. Everything yeah. vintage. We were raised to respect that uh, by my father, and um, this is his number one uh, most favorite event, for sure. The next day, we find the Moody's, a family that reunites every year for the race on the starting line. The ceremonial before starting takes place every morning. Anthony, a big Aston Martin fan who wouldn't miss the race for the world, pays a lot of attention. <laughs> Toro Auto, you learn something about yourself and you learn a lot about other people. Uh, on the face of it, the, the tour is about uh, cars, wonderful country, great people, camaraderie, etc., etc. But in fact, it's a very, very interesting uh, event in terms of what it teaches you about yourself and what it teaches you about other people. So I thought it would be something that my daughters would enjoy. Uh, and I know my wife does too. So to make it a family event uh, was something I was uh, very anxious to do. How do you feel? Uh, fantastic, really great. Lots of energy and, and, and um, adrenaline. Um, great that the weather has um, just been so superb all week. Um, and we can't, you know, 
we're already looking forward to next year. So yeah, we started, I started rallying with my father eight years ago. And then three years ago, my sister started rallying. So now we all uh, get together and, and do these. Why did you come with, with your father? Um, Dad lives in Asia. We're from England um, and we live in San Francisco. And so we wanted to meet somewhere and have fun together and do our do a hobby and a sport that we all love together. And so the Toronto provides that perfect venue for us to meet in the middle of the world. cigar always puts me in a good mood. The third day's route goes from Mulhouse to Luxembourg. Some smoke cigars, some have minor problems. It's just a normal day on the tour. Let's take a look at another family, the Miloé. Jean-Claude passed his lifelong hobby on to his three sons, and they've been signing up two Porsches for a number of years. We didn't have to participate, but I think it's a lot of fun to do this as a family because we don't see each other every day. Jean-Claude races a 904 with Jérôme and his two other sons, a 911 RSR. I was with him a lot, and we got to appreciate each other. So I bought a car and it took me a year to prepare it. I started racing and now we do it together. We see each other a lot. We live 50 kilometers apart, so it's easy to get together. Do you talk about cars when you meet? <laughs> when our mother's not with us, it's inevitable. We always end up talking about cars. When our mother is there, we try not to talk about it, but in the end, they always do. But as soon as she enters the room, we stop. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was not their day. In the morning, Jean-Claude and Jérôme got lost on their way to the starting line of the first stage. They even had to stop to check their way on a map. As they had to make some extra efforts to catch up with the others, they actually spun out and hit a barrier. As for Jean-Louis and Jean-Philippe, it's not much better. You want us to tell you about the last stage right away? We didn't do it. A piece of the clutch broke and my brother swung around and we hit the barrier. It was not the year for the Miloé. It is, however, the year of the Jaguars. As said before, Jaguar won for the first time in 1959. Bernard Constant won the race five times, including four times in a Jaguar. The Mark I and II ushered in a little revolution in the world of competition Gran Turismo. Since then, Bernard Constant remained faithful to the race that got him famous. After being involved in the organization of the race in the 1970s, he brought it back to life with Patrick Peter in the mid-80s. Ce 
I don't know why, but nobody knows why I fell in love with this race. I was 22 in 1954 when I raced my first auto tour in a Mark II. The road, the tracks, the hill climbing. I thought it was magic. There are seven of them on this year's edition. As you know, a car is defined first by its weight, then its frame, the brakes, and the engine. This car here has a wonderful engine. Unfortunately, it also has lousy brakes, and it's quite heavy, 1.5 tons, which is too much for a race car. But it is homogenous, and it does not have to be overcorrected or undercorrected. It's actually a pleasure to drive. The marks one and two signed on this year did better than expected. The best was ranked 22nd on the competition platform and 43rd on the reliability platform. Here is Dabel de Liban's point of view at the Museum of Montjalin at lunch break. He prepared his car for the occasion. It's the car that says auto tour the most. <laughs> Plus, we know Mr. Constant, and it is to honor him and Patrick Peter, who owns one of the cars that won, that we bring a Jaguar to the tour. It is the car of the 2009 edition. It was difficult to find one and to prepare it for the race. We made a new engine in 10 days and we got to the starting line. It's really a delight to drive a car that won so many years ago. Well, it is a pleasure. This one used to belong to me. I used to own Patrick Peter's Jag, too. There's the one with which I won in 1961. It is the second volume in the love story between Jaguar's Mark II and the Auto Tour. This is uh, a Jaguar Mark I, built in 1958. I'm using the car already six years. And uh, this car drove already several rallies, including the Carrera Panamericana, already three times. And uh, during last year, we also made very good positions every day. And uh, so the car is well, well known already in the scene. We have also a very good car and we uh, do uh, our maximum. <laughs> Luxembourg is the third stop in this year's auto tour. For the mechanics, or those who come with rich competitors, tomorrow will be a very special day. Before reaching Marc en Barole, the Optic 2000 auto tour will get to Spa. Everyone works in order to fix every little problem that a three-day race may have caused and to prepare for what will be an exhausting day. It's a small Alfa Romeo that we batter every day. It needs a little attention every night. We check up on it. Anyway, tonight everything's all right. For some others, the problems go way beyond a simple mechanical check. I have a Corsica Tour transmission, which is not made for spa, but it doesn't matter, we'll go easy on it. The moment is going to be great and everyone is waiting for it. Some already know Spa and will be comfortable there, but others can't wait to race on what is considered the ultimate Formula One racetrack. Today is a great day and Spa is my favorite track. Seven kilometers, 14 curves, it goes up and down, I love it. The race will be tough because the GT will be at home. The big turns, the long curves, we'll do our best, and we'll be waiting at the finish line in Deauville. As for the Alpines, it's clear that the 1800cc motor of the French car just can't compete with the 4.7 liters of the Cobra, so some hope that the gods will be on their side. Just a few adjustments so as to have a good time in Spa tomorrow, to please our pilot, and then everything should be all right. We're quite optimistic, 
We'd like some rain tomorrow. Do you have any information on that? No, it won't? Well, we'll deal with it. Mechanics then become very important and capture everyone's attention. I'm checking when he arrived on the assistance part. In principle, he has three hours to fix this car. And if he can't make it, he gets a penalty. They don't even have 1,800 cc's to compete with the others. These two Panard engine 700 cubic centimeter DBs are signed up in the regulatory platform and have to compete with the monsters we talked about. There's a sedan and a unique model of a barquette. How are you feeling? Like after 400 kilometers in a tin bathtub, it quivers a lot. It made two teeth of mine loose. But aside from that, it's a delight because the weather is great and we could not really face the rain. The people on the side of the road are great. The kids wave French flags. It's incredible. Because we drive a DB, it looks like the Leclerc division marching in on the villages. This engine is a myth among those of my generation. It has 1,600 winds. It's the bi-cylinder 700 cubic centimeter Panard engine that can bring the car up to 200 kilometers an hour if it's sharp. It will finally be 48th in the general ranking. Honoré Durand, Alain Gamsky, Bernard Deligny, and Pierre Leguil, the four musketeers of this Panard adventure, deserve congratulations for bringing back to life what many consider one of the best cars in the history of French mechanics. But for now, the Belgians rule. Spa has its regulars, and Jean-Pierre van der Rover is one of them. You must have a heart here. You must know the curves. Spa truly was the high point of this tour. Here is an incredible battle between an AC Cobra and a Porsche 910. It's clear that knowing the track is an advantage, even if some miss the old one, which was for men only, according to some. The sandboxes are now made of concrete, and they don't really put a limit to the track. However, Pierre knows how to work the width of these former sandboxes. Here's how he does it. The next stage is in the middle of the countryside on the road to Marcombareil, just before the finish in Deauville. The road is narrow, winding, and especially tricky. Do you think you'll be able to get back on the road? We hope. We'll check to make sure that the oil didn't get up into the head. Despite all the concern, Michel Billonret and Jean-François Pénillard are not the only ones who were given a hard time at this stage. What happened? I think it went into the pit, but I'm not the pilot. 
I saw a sign that said Northerners only, and since I'm the only Northerner competing, too bad for me. Here we go again. Those northerners can really drive, can't they? How do they do it? With some wire and some nice people that helped us. That was cool. Thank you and good evening. The contestants stop in Lille tonight, more precisely, at the Marc en Barreuil racetrack. Just like at other stops, lots of bystanders come out of curiosity or passion. Well, Seeing cars like this is incredible, a one-time opportunity. We drove 100 kilometers to see them. It's like a dream. I'm kind of nostalgic, but it's very interesting and I really enjoy it. There are also unusual moments, like this couple who celebrate a specific anniversary in their own way. It's a great love story. The passion for cars put us together, and I hope it will last 30 more years. It's our 30th anniversary, and it's always during the auto tour. The next day, the start from Macron Barreuil racetrack signals the last day of the race. The last day. It's a shame that there's no track today because days like the one we spent in Spa are just unforgettable. Like every morning, some events happen, such as here, where the keys are locked inside the car and it takes a hanger and some skills to open the door. And it's also time to do the math. The positions seem to be filled. They're in the competition platform, the H category, where Alain Serpagy, for once, beats the usual leader, Jean Ragnotti. It must be said that the celebrated driver has had more downs than ups this year, from a car that gave him trouble to some quite unusual problems. A piece of paper was sucked into the carburetor and was blocking everything else. We don't know if we removed it entirely because the car had trouble on the highway. Therefore, the victory is Serpagis until the last stage. His transmission broke a few kilometers from the finish line. This bad luck pushed Serpagy back to the second place in his category. In the G category, the winner is Mr. John of B. It is therefore Michel and Marie-Christine Lecours Porsche that wins the H category. A word about the performance index that allows smaller cars to stand their ground. It goes this year to this car, a 1954-1900 TI Alfa Romeo driven by Marco Cajani. 
In the same category, Albrecht and Christina Haas, Mark I Jaguar, finished second. And USA's Michael Gans, whose skills have been appreciated all along, finished third in a Lotus Elite. On this day, the tour's convoy will lead the contestants to a lunch in a magic place, the castle of Miromenil, Guy de Maupassant's birthplace. Once again, the public responded, and it is certain that the display of those incredible cars in such wonderful surroundings as the park will leave unforgettable memories to all the competitors. Here they are on the starting line of the last stage. They're all stopped there. There's a traffic jam. It's definitely Belgian. In the leading car, the co-pilot seems relaxed. Of course. 110%. Oh, no, no, no. On the other hand, Sean Lynn seems quite tense, even if he has most certainly won. How do you feel today? Nervous. Very nervous. It's, um, Why? Well, because we have a chance of winning. And yet, he is one minute 40 ahead of Ludovic Caron. Yeah, we have to avoid the traps, keep the car on the road, not get penalized at the last minute, and try to stay in second place. When he starts off the line, he intends to win. out, I pulled the yellow flag. Fortunately, Lynn lost only 40 seconds. Catching up another minute seems impossible for Calhoun. Organic electric powered car. An electrical powered Ferrari. <laughs> Earlier, they thought the smoke was coming out from my car. It was just my pipe. As we can see, the atmosphere is quite relaxed for the other contestants of that last stage. But the MGA number no. nine's crew is a little bit more tense, as they know they can win the regularity platform. When they start, the only raindrops of the week fall. The shower lasts for five minutes the time it took them to complete the stage. The rest of the trip is a liaison to Deauville and the finish line of the 18th edition of the Optic 2000 Auto Tour. We cross it with regularity platform winners. Scotland's James and Fiona Willis. At the end of the first day, they were in the 10th spot, then in the fifth, and in the third. It is during this last day that they finally came in first for an unexpected win.
Oh, I don't know. They may not may, may not let us back anymore. Yes, you have to <laughs> defend. Yeah, yes. Yes, no. I suppose we'll have to come back and uh, defend our honour. Try suppose. and do yes. better. Try and do better. Yeah. The winners of the different categories all gladly pop their bottles of champagne with satisfaction of being more than a regular contestant in the end. It is definitely Britain's year with Sean Lynn's victory, which he truly deserves after his deception of last year. And he kept the pressure on, and uh, once um, once he saw that I'd spun, the first thing he said to me at the first in breaks is, oh, I'm catching you. And it was, ah, oh. and the pressure was already being put on, and the, and the mind going, which it worked. Absolutely. <laughs> When we take a look back, what is apparent is every contestant's satisfaction. The 2009 edition of the Optic 2000 Auto Tour is definitely a success. It was a great tour. It was the most wonderful time.